say, can you see by the dawn's early light? You are as precious to me as you were to your own mother and father. I swore to them that I would protect you, and I haven't. The bears that dumped him in the spring. Really? Mm -hmm. But he's a hero, a war hero. This is peacetime. You think this can last? There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. You and your friends better batten down the hatches. Because when it hits me, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little for the rest of us. What does that mean? Prize. What does that mean? Ashes. You have my permission to die. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are two guys in a comic book. I'm Patrick Michael Strange. I'm Ulysses Z. Campbell. Welcome. And we are here at the amazing, the Japanese fantastic Entertainment Museum. Oh, in yeah. Beautiful downtown Baltimore, Inner Harbor, Camden Station. I never get enough of this place. No. This place is great. No. They've got everything here. And if you're a pop culture lover, you will love this place. Tell them two guys in a comic book sent you. Can you hear it? The angels are singing. Wings are flapping. This is just the amazing museum. Thank you to Andy, the curator here at the museum, for welcoming us again. And Mr. Andy Steve Hushberg. Jeppe for uh, allowing us to come here. We thank you guys. This is such an amazing museum. But here we are again to film another episode of Two Guys in a Comic Book. I'm so excited. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just and we're going to talk about all of it. We're pumped Red up. Bull. Yeah. I'm the Red Bull bra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dark Knight Rises. We touched upon it last show. All sorts of records. Yes. For attendance. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Bane, Tom Hardy, Catwoman, The Last of the Nolan Trilogy. Mm -hmm. I have certain mm -hmm. feelings on it. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it too much last episode, but I know you're wearing the Batman shirt, so I want to let you go. Give I'm us a, more of your I'm a huge Batman fan. Yes. I mean, yes. I, I cosplay Batman. You know, for I those did see that on Facebook. I was like, look at this guy. What can I tell you, you know? But um, I'm not a particularly big fan of the Christopher Nolan Batman films. Okay. Um, I thought that Batman Begins was the best one of the three. Um, I, you know, the second one, it was kind of long. Um, as much respect as I had for Heath Ledger and for what he did, uh, honestly, I thought that Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker was more of the definitive portrayal of the Joker. Uh, and you could have made that two movies. I mean, you didn't have to stick Two-Face in at the end of that, making it so incredibly long. Um, it was extremely well received. Uh, and, you know, that's fine. But I think that if you are not a fan of Batman comic books, you'll like this movie better. I, I think that, particularly this third one, because they base the third more firmly on the first two as opposed to the original source material of the comics. And that's good if you're just a movie fan. It's bad if you're a Batman fan. Because, for example, Batman is a detective. He's an inventor. You know, he's a scientist. He's a genius. Um, these things didn't come out in this particular movie. I mean, yeah, he's trained uh, with ninja skills and fighting skills and all that. That part came out. But every time he needed something, he went to Morgan Freeman. It's like, hey, it's gee, guys. yeah, you know, I need this, I need that. He wasn't inventing anything himself, you know? 
So, um, and, and he didn't use detective work at all. I mean, the detective thing is a huge part of what makes Batman Batman. Wow. So um, I, I had some issues with all those things. Now, the other thing is, oh, by the way, there are going to be spoilers in this. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, you might want to turn your sound down. Um, eight years between The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises seems a little excessive to me. I, I think that in Gotham City, you know, basically your hell town on the East Coast, mm -hmm. how is Batman going to be able to be in retirement for eight years? That's crazy. You mean tell me... The Joker didn't escape prison. The Riddler didn't show up. The Penguin, you know, Two Face. Yeah, well, Two Face is dead. But you know what? The, the myriad of these characters that Batman has, the Rogues Gallery, none of these people showed up in eight years. This is, I, I it, it, and even if they didn't, Batman is going to be out fighting street level crime. He is that motivated, that driven <laughs> behind the tragic event that caused him to become Batman. You know, he's not going to be sitting around for eight years pining over Maggie Gyllenhaal. You know, this is not going to happen. I just, I thought, it, I, I said, yeah, it, yeah, I didn't think it was particularly believable. You know, um, the other thing I would have liked to have seen Tom Hardy inject himself with some venom. And I tell you what, I, I actually saw this online. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, the guy sounded like, you know, the guy at McDonald's who's like, Carte Corona, please. Or, I couldn't understand half of what this guy was saying. I mean, it was oh like, gosh. will you take the mask off so I can understand you? I mean, there were some things that I liked. I liked the fact that they had Tally in it. I thought that was inspired. Although but, they didn't do such a good job personally. Well, you know, I mean, I liked the fact that she was there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, although um, there were a number of times I found myself sort of anxious for the movie to move along because... Yeah. It dragged at the beginning. I thought it was really disjointed. A lot of the stuff that happened there didn't seem to really fit together particularly well. A lot of it was predictable. You know, I mean, in fact, when Batman was, you know, training in the prison, trying to get his mojo back, I was, I was waiting for the Rocky theme to play. <laughs> you know, to do it the other day. So anyway, but, and I've talked this up for the first uh, segment here. We're going to go to a break, but when we go back, Patrick will have the opportunity to respond, so you stay tuned, and we'll be right back with two guys and a comic book. Hi, I'm Steve Jeffy, and I'd like to welcome you to Jeffy's Entertainment Museum. In 1974, I quit my job as a letter carrier at the U.S. Postal Service and opened a small comic book store in the basement of a TV repair shop. Little did I realize that from that humble beginning would grow this incredible pop culture collection you see here today. At the center of that collection is the comic character, the Brownies, Buster Brown, Mickey Mouse, the Lone Ranger, Superman, Barbie. These are just some of the characters who've made a tremendous impact on our individual childhoods while at the same time shaping our collective experience. Welcome back to Two Guys, that's us, and a comic book that's all around us. <laughs> I'm Ulysses Campbell. Patrick Strange. And we were talking about Dark Batman, Night the Dark Rises. Knight Rises. The end of the Nolan trilogy. The end. And your deep feelings Thank about goodness. it. Yes, yes. Well, this movie doesn't make, I mean, in fact, even the second one didn't make my top five comic book adaptations because it's not an adaptation. But you wow. need to respond. I, I said wow. a lot. I you said did a, say lot. a lot. And I and really it sounded was... like I was slamming it. I'm really not slamming it. It was okay. I'm a huge Batman fan. I'm afraid to say show. something. I really yeah. am afraid to say something because I don't want those fans that are watching the show and are hopefully becoming fans of our show not tuning in oh, they're gonna be, <laughs> because they're... we didn't praise Nolan and everything he's been doing for DC and Batman hey, and all of that. I'm, I'm lucky this show ain't live because they'd be waiting <laughs> out by my car in the parking lot. You yes, know? <laughs> they, I mean, the way these people are acting right now. Yes. Well, oh, even oh the gosh. negative reviews. They, the, the reviewers were getting death threats. Yes. I mean, it's lunacy. Yeah. The opinions displayed on this show are those of the two hosts and do not in any way reflect on the opinions of Jeppy's Entertainment Museum or Steve Jeppy himself. Dark Knight is the movie ever! Come on! Come on. <laughs> we are now back with two guys in a comic book. We are having a lot of fun right a now. A lot of say. fun. I'm Patrick Michael Strange. I'm Ulysses E. Campbell. And we just had a great segment in regards to Dark Knight Rises and my, well, it's not over. my, my friend Yuli's uh, commentary regarding the film. 
Wow. Going to um, give me death threats. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we opened with that disclaimer. Um, because we don't uh, want you to burn down Jeffy's Entertainment. Exactly. There's a lot of Nolan worshippers out there. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, th there's going to be more Batman. Uh, that's what I really want to say. And those are my feelings. Um, because I really didn't appreciate uh, the marketing of Dark Knight Rises, that this is the last of the Dark Knight trilogy, this is the last of Batman. Well, it, Batman it will be it is. there after Nolan oh, and all yeah, that. It will be Come a different on. Batman. It'll be, and, and you know, you got to tell these people because the Batman that they like is this Batman. It's just in every era has its own Batman. I mean, I, I, what I grew up on was Pal, Biff, Socko, you know, True. Adam West and Burt Ward, you know. And every time I think of Batman, you know, as surrender criminal, you know, I mean, this is you know, ingrained in me. And you know, there's going to be a whole generation that grows that is up true. on, that is true. you know, there's just people going crazy uh, about the end of this. And yeah. to me, mm -hmm. You need to give the guy Relax. Like a throat lozenge or something. You know what I mean? Christian Bale. <laughs> Why does he talk like this when he's dressed as Batman? That's almost as tough to understand as the guy wearing the McDonald's uh, intercom thing on his face, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's done. It's over. I'm afraid to comment, so I don't want people to burn my house down. So let's move on to something else. Let's shine oh, oh. on something else. You didn't like it? <laughs> Okay. All right, Walking Dead 100. Okay, Walking Dead 100. Mm -hmm. We had mm -hmm. uh, the end of the Something to Fear storyline uh, that started with, what was it, 98, 97? I'm not quite sure. It was like, was it five issues? Well, um, actually, they're, they're still, I mean, because that, I mean, they're kind of into it. Was but that was was that the actual end of the Something to Fear? I mean, I, you know what? I'm it not seemed like, sure. it, after reading it, it looked like it was just the beginning. <laughs> that is <laughs> true. Know? That is true. I mean. Well, I want to, uh, let's talk on the comic level. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day in the what 90s, we used to have special up. variant covers with everything. Oh, it, you know, you know chromium covers and all that, that. Multiple variant covers, which still happens. Yeah. But it's also just like books. a variant edition cover. Yeah. But they want to sell books. They want to trick you into buying the same book like eight times. Exactly. Oh, this is a different Walking Dead 100. Let me play it with my, my three ninety nine for this. So what was it? 12 different covers they put out? You tell me. It seemed like 12. I only bought one. Of them one. Was a chrome. <laughs> I mean, I had, but I only bought oh, one. That was probably six ninety nine. I picked up the McFarlane one because I'm a huge pick McFarlane fan. It was cool to see him drawing again. Um, that's another thing. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was sitting here trying to remember which one I got because I, I, I wanted to get the Alex Ross one, but that's not the one I got. I didn't see the Alex Ross one. Yeah, he, they, hey, he did one. Everybody did one. Painted cover. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so what did you think of it? Um, well, because you just came back to the walking. That's place. true. As I was telling Yuli um, last show, uh, as we wrapped up, I left off after they left Actually, the that prison. That was off camera. That was off camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, for all you out there, I was reading The Walking Dead religiously. Love it. No, look, look, they're not actually reading The Walking Dead. They're watching it on AMC. That they don't know true. anything about what we're talking about. But uh, I have seen, and a lot of my friends, I, they got pulled into the comic book. So I will, I'll let's give the comics some credit. Really? It helps spur well, the Good the for film. you. If, if <laughs> watching the AMC TV series made you want to go out and buy the comic book and read it, Thank then you. kudos. I applaud you. So... If you're reading the book, I left off after they left the prison. Now with this next season, they're going to the prison. So if that you're not familiar and you're reading, if you're reading the comic book because of the film, the show or whatever, the, the universes are a little bit different. That was quite a departure from that prison. Yes. <laughs> that was quite a departure. You know, uh, when I first started reading The Walking Dead, All right. uh, a friend of mine who manages the comic book store where I shop yes. gave me the best bit of advice anybody has ever given me regarding a comic book. Uh, I mean, at least, especially with regard to Walking Dead. He said, don't get too attached to anybody. <laughs> I said, oh. True. <laughs> that, and that set the tone Which for what the Walking Dead is all about. I mean, because, yeah, I, I, in fact, I remember once, years ago, they were talking about the old uh, Chris Claremont, John Byrne X-Men. Yes. And uh, somebody had said, oh, we want to try and make this a book where nothing, not even our hero's continued survival is guaranteed. Well... <laughs> Walking Dead actually delivers on that. Yes, they do. You know, I mean, because with Walking Dead 100, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but one of the last original characters dies. Well, excuse me, doesn't just die. He gets slaughtered. Oh, <laughs> you know, he gets beaten down. It's it, it's horrible. It's absolutely yeah. horrible. And you know, there, there's only a handful for me. of the original characters who who remain. And only you know? a handful of Asian. 
characters in comic books. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I'm a spoiled nothing. Hey. Like, I'm a <laughs> guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, hey, but I tell you something. Um, what I really liked about this book was um, there will be blood. <laughs> there and, will and be blood. That was the motto of Something to Fear. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but look, we're reaching the end of this segment. But don't go away because we'll be right back with two guys and a comic book. As you wander through these halls, you will see the history of the country and our changing society reflected in those characters and the media through which they entertained us. Why are these characters so important to us? Perhaps it is their power to distract us. They've brought us relief in times of trouble, like the Great Depression and World War II. Today, they help us escape the pressure and stress of our ordinary, everyday lives. But there's more to it than that. These characters have played a large and largely unrecognized role in our education. Batman comic books helped me to learn to read when I was five years old. Thanks, big guy. Fanboys, fangirls, we are back. Two guys in a comic book. Patrick Strange, Ulysses Campbell. And we are here again to give you some more comic book goodness. DC 52. It's still brewing, it's still going, and now, if you've been tracking after Comic-Con 2012, Marvel Now. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they say? <laughs> but before we go into Marvel Now, let's talk about what's leading into Marvel Now. We discussed this on a past show, AVX. Oh, yeah. It's Avengers to lead us into X-Men. Marvel Now. Yeah. We have the Phoenix Five, uh, a super-powered... Uh, Phoenix just, Award. You're, Phoenix you're, you're, you're just giving Sucks. away everything today. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're a comics fan, you, you're, you're reading you this. You should have read this stuff you already. You should have read it already. You should have read it already. All right. Yes. You got your, your Phoenix powered Emma Frost, your Phoenix powered Namor, your Phoenix powered Colossus, Magic, and Cyclops. Cyclops. And uh, they're going to town on our Avengers. Um, from the last, the last issue that I read, uh, the Avengers now have hope with them. Um, are you reading this? Yes. All right. Yes. They and, and he doesn't mean they just have hope, but they actually have hope summers. <laughs> Mind you, because this is at character. the end of the last issue I read, um, last we left our stalwart heroes. Cyclops says it's 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 go time now. Yes, it's they're not playing. You yes. took my my is it no a more I'm not quite sure that whole yeah, summers thing, but yeah. we won't go over there because that's a whole other episode. But here we are. Uh, your latest thoughts on AVX and now how we're going to lead into Marvel now. Well, you know, Patrick, <laughs> I, I, you know, these, these annual, one of the things that kind of turned me off to comics a long time ago when I stopped collecting um, back in the late 1980s, uh, in addition to the fact that I was like broke. <laughs> but um, I got tired of these annual events. Every summer, there was some new annual event crossovers endlessly between all these titles where they're trying to sell the books. And Avengers vs. X-Men, to me, it's basically just another fancy gimmick to sell some more comic books, you know? I mean, you know, time was... Oh, no, 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 hey, it's a business. Yeah. It's a business, but it's the, biz- it's the business of entertainment, yeah. you know? But there's some things where I feel like the, 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 the goal should be to entertain. And if you entertain well enough, you're going to make the money, okay? It's not like you got to say, what's the biggest, most incredible thing we can come up with? And that was that was what turned me off before because, all right, if you save the universe, that's a kind of big deal, you know? They were saving the universe, like, annually. I mean, yeah. you can't keep saving the universe and dragging the fans back and having everybody be like, yay, we saved the universe again! I mean, not that that's not cause for celebration, don't get me wrong, but it's just, it becomes passe yeah. if you're doing that all the time. I mean, have them fight some men with guns every now and again, you know? Yeah. Can't we save the world just this once? How about the galaxy, you know? I mean, what's it going to be the whole universe? I agree. You know? I, I will say it seems like they're always building up to an event instead of building up yeah. the characters like they used to. Well, yeah. You know, yeah, there's I mean, been some great individual character storylines, and now it's all about the event. Yeah. Everything well, leads up to an event. Yeah, but you know, part of that is just the nature of uh, the sales. I mean, back in the 40s, mm-hmm. you'd have comic books that sold a million copies. Mm-hmm. You know, now, if you get a comic book that sells a quarter of a million, that's phenomenal, super incredible, you know, amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, the, this um, group of people that's buying these things kind of keeps getting smaller and smaller. True. 
You know, I mean, of course, comic books were only ten cents back then. Also, I yeah. mean, you know, you're plunking down three ninety nine, two ninety nine yes. now. But I'll, I'll be glad. I mean, for a variety of reasons, I'll be glad to see this Avengers versus X Men thing over when it's over. Although there's some trepidation because that's leading into this Marvel now. Yes, Marvel now. Like Marvel now. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like they're in there now. It feels like they're copying what DC Fifty Two did. Well, that's apparently based on what you're because I don't I know Jack. I mean, this guy is the expert, and I know nothing about Marvel now. I mean, that's what you were telling me. It's like yes. now with the success of the, the new Fifty Two mm -hmm. DC reboot, Marvel is rebooting their thing now, and it's called Marvel now. Yeah, from what I gather, at the end of AVX, here comes this whole Marvel now. There's been some images leaked online. Um, actually, well, from Marvel, so I wouldn't say it was a leak. They're putting out these posters, but. And if you go, go on the different threads, there's this whole new uh, trilogy. Well, not trilogy, but this whole kind of relaunch of all their titles. Um, and one of them being Uncanny Avengers. They're mixing the... It yeah. seems like at the end of ABX, they're going to mix the X-Men and the Avengers together. All right, so they're combining those two yes. titles or something? Yes, I think that's going to be the, the, the opening yeah. title for uh, this new Marvel Now launch. Hmm. Um, interesting, although... It just seems such a rip-off of what they're doing with DC-52. Well, um, it worked for uh, but it did work Aquaman for and Animal Man because, and Swap Thing. Yes, because I'm mean. such a huge Aquaman fan now. I love what they're doing with the character. And so, we'll see. You know, they're always doing these changes, these big uh, reboots. You know, comic books will always be there. Our mm -hmm. heroes will always be there. It just, it's just weird that they're always doing that. question of what form they'll take, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. that, that's something, though, I had to get accustomed to mm -hmm. uh, over the years because... You know, it's like you were saying earlier in this show. Um, yeah, Batman will always be there, and Batman always will. But you know, there's a big difference between the Batman, the original Batman, you know, uh, Kane and Bill Finger and Jerry Robinson's conception of him, yes. than what we have today. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, I saw over on the shelf they had, uh, you know, the original Batman and like the new Batman. Mm -hmm. Even you know, I mean, the cut of the costume, yes. you know, what the guy does. The original Batman carried a gun. You know, I mean, it, it, it's going to be different, and every generation is sort of going to have their their take on That's what true. these characters are going to be, and it, it, that is what is going to have primacy for them. You mm -hmm. know, and that is always going to, you know, they, they they're they're going to own that. They're going to have a personal investment in that. So, you know, I mean, I shudder to think what little kid the first comic he picks up is the Uncanny Avengers. <laughs> you know. And I, yeah, and, and like you're saying, and I like I like how you did put that. No matter what, you, although you fall in love with the current iteration, it's going to be different because what you fall in love with wasn't what your dad fell in love with, and you know, so mm -hmm. it, it's just you get attached. And, and I think we all become emotionally attached to certain characters, and so, um, but we just go back and reread those previous issues. You know, if you're not reading what oh, you I enjoy will. now, <laughs> I will. And trust then, me. Well, there's also those. Uh, uh, like Vertigo, they have like a, this, what was the alternate universe? You know, they always come out with also alternate universes of those characters and different graphic novels to go with that. So we'll get that material, I guess. Hey, this but, this um, is an alternate universe to me. <laughs> I'm reading this stuff. I'm like, well, it's yeah. not like nothing I've ever seen. It's it's Marvel now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I will say, that in the Marvel now image that I saw, Iron Man, because I know you're a fan of Iron Man, he has like black, predominantly black with gold. Armor on with uh, the uh, the what's the oh yeah they, with, with yeah. Them, like a red glow coming from that's uh, that's like Iron Man two point oh they're actually doing that now yeah in yeah the Iron Man comics yeah you know? so I, I saw that I haven't that. been reading two point oh so I'm not too familiar I, I'm guilty of that no no but there's, there's Iron Man two point oh no I, cause that, I know what you're talking about but there's Iron Man two point oh that was Rhodey and that was like the updated War Machine thing but there's also in the in the Invincible Iron Man there's Iron Man two point oh because um, oh. you know Stark himself had the uh, arc reactor thing pulled out of his chest, and apparently has given up the Iron Man identity, and so you have no idea who this is wearing the Iron I Man armor. That. Because you've got Rhodey as War Machine, you've got Pepper as Rescue, and you've got who knows. Pepper's a superhero now. Well, she's it, it, it's it's a it has no offensive weapons. It's supposed to be for um, rescue, like search and rescue type of. Thing. Yes. Well, <laughs> we gotta go. We're getting rushed off of here. They want us to close this down, but we want to stay here. No, we no, want to no, do more back. episodes. But I, no, no, we'll be back. We'll continue this. This, no, this is just a break. We'll be right back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be back. Stay tuned. <laughs>
I dreamed of creating this museum for almost 30 years, but where to build it? When I toured Camden Station for the first time in 2003, I realized I had finally found the home these characters so richly deserved. Abraham Lincoln passed through this building four times. When Babe Ruth left his boyhood home in Baltimore to play for the Boston Red Sox, he took a train from this very station. Today, the first floor houses sports legends at Camden Yards, a museum which chronicles the history. I've been called Baltimore's biggest cheerleader. Guilty as charged. Heck, I even bought the City Magazine. I was born and raised in Little Italy, an ethnic neighborhood just across the Inner Harbor from here. I love this city and all of its spectacular attractions. From the National Aquarium and the Science Center, to the Walters Art Gallery and Museum of African American History and Culture, to the restaurants of Fells Point and Little Italy, Baltimore has something for everyone. I urge you to visit all of those places and experience everything this magnificent city has to offer. But first, I'd like you to take a trip with me in my time machine to discover or revisit all the wonderful characters, friends I call them, that have shaped our popular culture. And don't be afraid to say, hey, I had that when I was a kid. I do it all the time. come to the end of another show. Oh, man. I'm bumming, man. <laughs> I want this show to keep going on. In fact, they're going to have to turn the lights out on me. Yeah. I'm scared to go to my car because there are all these people waiting to oh, beat no. me up. <laughs> anyway, look, thanks for tuning in. I hear them. They, they sound just like the, the, the worshippers in Dark Knight Rises. Oh, uh, Yuli, Yuli. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can make it to my car. You've been watching Two Guys and a Comic Book. This is Patrick Michael Strange, and I'm Ulysses Campbell! And we'll be back with yet another edition of Two Guys in a Comic Book next time. All right.